What's up, 412? Uh -huh. I'm just messing. What's up, Praise Youth? Welcome to 2021. Anybody feel different? It was just a date change. That's all it was. Here's what I did. I got to talk to a few people in the lobby, which I had a lot of fun with. How many of you are wearing some of your Christmas gear right now? Like you got it on Christmas and you're like, yo, I can't wait for the first Praise Youth. I'm wearing that hoodie. I'm wearing these jeans. I saw Sage, our uh, guest team leader, he's got these fire shoes on right now. Put them as high as you can in the air, Sage. Wow, those are so good. Uh, and also, thank you. Uh, it is raining and lightning, and a lot of you almost died on the way here, but thank you. Come on, you went out of your way to be at Praise Youth tonight. Give yourselves a hand. Come on. I think that's amazing. I really do. And uh, so here's what I want you to do with that, though. It's one thing to show up. It's another thing to lean in. Y'all hear me? It's one thing to show up. It's another thing to lean in. And we are one of the funnest youth churches, youth ministries in the entire world. Because I love having fun, right? The joy of the Lord is our strength. It's in the Bible. But also, we are unapologetic about our love for Jesus. Anybody else with me, right? I'm a, I love Jesus, and I love to learn. I love to learn from God's word. And so today I have a single message um, that I'm titling Together. And it is one of those messages that I'm like, if you would get this at your age, it is a building block. It is something that you can hold on to for the rest of your life that will dramatically affect the trajectory or the, the direction and the, the life that you will live. And it's the concept of Together. That's what we're gonna talk about tonight. Next week, Pastor Aaron will be preaching um, an incredible message as we launch a series that we did in 412 about five years ago. Um, actually, it was five years ago because I saw it on my time hop today called You've Won Me. It's a series about worship. It's a series where we're gonna take the best songs that we sing and we're gonna break down scripture and show you why we sing what we sing. And we're gonna start that next week. So, but for tonight, we are talking about this concept of together. And I got to ask you this question to kind of start this thing off. Has, has anyone ever been in a position to where someone prayed for you? Okay. I don't know what kind of church background you grew up in, but I grew up in a church background where it was completely normal for people to come up to you and put their hands on you and, and pray for you. Okay. And that's, some of you didn't grow up like that. That's kind of how I grew up. And we do that from time to time around here to where we will have our adults come up and say, Hey, how can I pray for you? And they'll put a light hand on your shoulder. Right and they will pray for you. And honestly, it can be a very powerful thing. Well, one time I was at church, this lady came up to me and she was like, can I pray for you? And I was like, sure, here's my shoulder. She was like, okay, and she grabbed my belly, right? And then she proceeded to jiggle said belly. And she said, receive! I don't know what she was trying to do in that moment, but I was just like, Lord, take me now. Just take me to heaven. I'm okay. I love you. You love me. What is happening right now? It was one of the most awkward prayer moments of my entire life. But then also I've had those moments as well. In fact, I had a moment last night um, at Jay Wilson's at 930 at night to where my mentor, my best friend, reached across the table, grabbed me by the hand, and prayed over my life. And I've had those powerful prayer moments. One of my favorite moments at Winter Retreat is we will finish Winter Retreat, and if you want prayer from your adult leader, we get in a line, and you just, we spend a little bit of time, and you can walk up to your adult leader, and you can say, hey, can you just pray for me? And they will place their hand on your belly, I mean, on your shoulder, <laughs> and they will pray for you, right? And it can be a very impactful thing to hear someone, let's just be honest, right? Let's take all the weirdness of church out of it. To hear someone talk to God about you, it is a special thing. It is a very special thing for someone to talk to God about you. Ladies, you should find a husband that wants to talk to God about you. You know what I'm saying? But for now, we'll have some adult leaders who want to do that or whatever. So Jesus prayed for his leaders, right? Jesus prayed for his disciples. And that's kind of where I'm going to start off tonight. It's in John chapter 17. We're going to read it on the screen here in a second. But Jesus was actually praying for his disciples, his leaders. And in John, one of his disciples, later when he wrote his book about the crazy things that happened, uh, he was like, I got to record all of the things that happened because Jesus wasn't just a good man who taught good things. Jesus wasn't just a, a good example of how we can live our life. He wasn't just someone who set up moral excellence. This guy died and I watched him come back to life. He's God. And we've got to write this stuff down. 
And so he wrote it down. And he included this moment of all of the years that he was with Jesus, he included this moment. This moment actually happens to be right before Jesus goes to the cross to die. Jesus knew that he was going to the cross, and he's actually hanging out with his disciples in a garden, and he decides to pray over them and to pray for them. And as he's praying for them, John chapter 17 is called Jesus' prayer over his disciples. Uh, It's recorded in John chapter 17. As he's praying over them, he says something so interesting that I had to read it to you tonight. Y'all want to hear it? Do you want to hear this? It's so interesting. John chapter 17, we're going to go to verse 20 because he's in the middle of his prayer. And Jesus says this. He says, I do not ask for these only. Right? He's in the garden. He's praying for his disciples. And he says, I'm not just praying for these disciples only, but also for those who will believe in me through what they say, through their word. That they would, I'm going to pause there. I'm going to get to what Jesus actually prays. But let's pause and let's wait for a second that God is, Jesus is talking to God the Father about us. Jesus pauses and he says, I'm not only praying for the disciples that I can see in front of me, but I'm also praying with my spiritual eyes to see Praise Youth in 2021. On the first Praise Youth of 2021, I'm praying for those who will hear the good news. He's praying for you in this moment. Not just for those that are in front of him, but those that will believe according to their word. Their word is the gospel. Their word is the good news. And the news has been so good about God's love for us that he gave his only begotten son that whosoever believes in him would not perish but would have eternal life. That he who knew no sin became sin so that in him he might become the righteousness of God. The news is so good it's been passed on for thousands of years. And here we are talking about it today. And Jesus talked to God about you. He's praying for you. So what does he pray? What does he talk to God? And what is his request when he's thinking about you? What is his request when he's thinking about us? He says this, that they all may be one. Right? He says, I do not ask for these only, but I ask for those who will believe in me through the disciples' words, that they all may be one. In that moment, you just need to write together, that they all may be together. What does it mean to be one? Jesus says, just as you, Father, are in me and I am in you, that they also may be in us, so that the world may believe that you have sent me. The glory that you have given me, I have given to them, and that they may be one, even as we are one. I and them, and you and me, and they may become perfectly one so that the world may know that you sent me and loved them as you have loved me. Jesus is exposing his nature in this moment by saying, God, um, I know it's hard for their human minds to understand, but we exist together. Holy Spirit, God, Father, and Jesus the Son. Now, if we believe in a God, you would want that God to be so far beyond our understanding because he's the creator and we're the created, right? There's this fundamental aspect of like, how do you even have a concept of what God is, right? And the only reason why we know who God is is because Jesus is the physical representation, the physical image of the invisible God. And you don't want God to be just like you because he's the, he's the creator, you're the created. Our God is so infinitely, beautifully, holy and different, that he is actually three persons in one. We call it, the best that we can understand it, people who study the Bible, we call it the Trinity. You have God the Father. You guys have heard of him, right? God the Father. Have you heard of Jesus the Son? Have you heard of the Holy Spirit? This is one God in three persons. One God, equal in value, all three of them, distinct in role. They have different roles to play. And so, like, you're like, okay, Jimmy, this is weird. But all I'm trying to say is you, God is exposing, he's revealing a little bit of who he is. Our God exists in together. Our God exists in this unity of somehow distinct in role, equal in value, God the Father, God the Son, God the Holy Spirit, right? Now, I intentionally wanted to blow your mind there for a moment because the whole point of the You've Won Me series starting next week is that the reason why we worship God is because he's God and we're not. We all have a death problem. You all will die at some point. What are you going to do about it? 
You can come up with all of your little things and you may feel like you can conquer the world and you may feel like you're someone special in your school, but at the end of the day, you are a human and you have a death problem. What are you gonna do about it? I submit you've made a great choice by coming to church, coming to hear about someone who died the death that we should have died and came back to life. He conquered the problem and proved that he's God. And that's why we're even talking about Jesus. When you ever hear the phrase, because of Jesus, that's what we're talking about. The only reason I believe anything in this Bible is because that man died and came back to life. I'm going with whatever he says. Because I've been to a bunch of funerals and everybody stays dead, but this man came back to life and he prophesied it, proved it. And, uh, sorry, I'm getting distracted. But all I want you to hear is this. Jesus knows that we are stronger together. Write that in your journal if you got your journal. Jesus knows that we are stronger together because he exists in together, right? All I really want you to write down is Jesus knows that we are stronger together. Somebody just say amen to that, right? Amen. amen. Jesus knows that we are stronger together. Here's the, here's the other thing. He also knows that together isn't easy because sin separates. So we are stronger together. We ought to be like, yeah, yeah, yeah. But together isn't easy because sin separates. And here's what I want you to show you. Like God in his wisdom has given us um, things to live by in scripture. There's a scripture in Ecclesiastes chapter four, verses nine and 10. This comes from wisdom literature in the Old Testament to where uh, this guy Solomon is before Jesus was considered to be the wisest person that ever lived. And then Jesus came around and then obviously Jesus won that battle. You know what I mean? Uh, but then, but what Solomon wrote this and this is what he writes in Ecclesiastes four, nine and 10. He says, two are better than one because they have a good reward for their toil. For if they fall, one will lift up his fellow. But woe to him who is alone when he falls and has not another to lift him up. Now, I don't know what you did with the last month of your life, but I had a great time. And I told some of you this in the lobby. I had a great time. Actually, uh, one of my favorite people, the uh, high school guys, adult leader, Ryan Stanley, got married to one of my other favorite people, Paige, former Pierce Stanley, right? So here's Ryan. Ryan, wave. Come on. There's Paige. Paige, wave. Come on. Uh, so they got married, and they had this great idea. Let's get married in Zion National Park in Utah. Originally, I thought they were crazy, but honestly, I had the time of my life, right? Nine o'clock at night, the night before Ryan gets married, inch and a half of snow on the ground. There's a river between us and this mountain, and he's like, guys, we're hiking that mountain. And I'm like, come again? <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, uh, they're like, we're going. We're going. It's the middle of the night. I was like, okay, we're going to follow the trails, right? Nope. We're just going straight up the mountain. I was like, I looked at Aaron, and, I, and Aaron looked at me, and we said, let's do this, right? I don't know what we did. We didn't do that at all. But I was like, yeah, man, I'm totally down. Inside, I'm like, I'm going to die, you know, but anyway, we ended up hiking this mountain, right? And I mean, we're talking like, and like people in front of me, I think Caleb was with us too, right? So Caleb's, Caleb, another small group leader, uh, he was the uh, co-best man in the wedding with, with Aaron. And uh, I'm just kidding. But uh, there's like rocks falling and I'm like dodging rocks as we're trying to go up there. There's no trail. There's like nobody out there. The moon is bright. It's reflecting off the snow. It's beautiful. We're in Utah. It's freezing. I've gloves that I bought from a grocery store or a gas station that were one dollar they were soaking wet I'm freezing I'm dying but I'm like this is the best time of my life and we're going up this side of this mountain and I'm like yo I need to quit like I'm done like we're going to die there's like shell rock coming down at me like what's going to happen and it was just one of those things where I was like because we were together there was no way any of us were stopping because we were together it was like no we can take the next hill no we can go up the next ridge and there was like five times where i was like please can we go back there was like a river that we were trying to cross and i was picking up farm equipment and like running over to the thing and be like can we use this and they're like we're gonna get arrested and i was like i'm sorry and i like ran back with it but because we were together and this is the wisdom that was written thousands of years ago two are better than one because they have a good reward for their toil if they fall one will lift up his fellow like, how many of you have been in practice, you've been in rehearsal, and you are ready to quit, but your teammates come around you, and they're like, no, we are practicing so that we can play in a game, and I am here to lift you up, and they lift out their hand, and they're like, get up, come on, you're not staying down, you're getting up, and you're ready to quit, and you have somebody in your life saying, no, 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 we're a team, we're doing this together. Anybody else experienced that before? Two are, you, together, we are stronger together. Solomon goes on, and he says, and though a man might prevail against one who is alone, two will withstand him. Now he's talking about fighting. It's pretty awesome. 
Then he says this, a threefold cord is not easily broken, which is like this really cool concept. And Courtney's going to help me with this real quick because I didn't really understand what a threefold cord was until um, I saw this mega jump rope uh, of a threefold cord. Um, and so this is a threefold cord. Look at this thing. This is three cords. You can see the yellow one and there's two black ones, right? And uh, this thing's huge. Come on, Sage. I'm scared. Anything, this thing would do a hurting on somebody. Looks like a snake. I'm just kidding. Uh, this thing's huge. And uh, this is what it's talking about. Like this thing, I mean, you can play like tug of war with this thing and it's not gonna snap, right? You're gonna be the one that's gonna fall in the mud pit. But I mean, that's a cool analogy, but it's kind of hard to know like how strong this thing is. This is actually seven years old and you're supposed to jump rope with it. But I, the one thing I can't do in life is jump rope. I'm sorry, I'm not a middle school girl, so I can't jump rope. Uh, but go ahead and bring me the other ones. And who do you think is one of the strongest people in the youth group? Anybody wanna nominate a guy next to you, a girl next to you? Uh, who do you think is one of the strongest people in the youth group? Anybody want to go for it? Anybody want to go for it? Nominate. Come on. Don't be scared. Who do you think it is? Dre? All right, we'll go little Dre. We'll go little Dre. I say little Dre. His dad's in my small group. So go little Dre. Come on, y'all. Bring it up for little Dre. Just hop up here, bro. I'm running out of time. Yeah, just hop up, bro. Hop up. Unless you're going to split your Christmas pants. <laughs> I'm just kidding. You got it? Awesome. All right. True story. I went to Hobby Lobby today. 40% mm -hmm. off everything. <laughs> this is a single dowel rod. Okay. Uh, go ahead and place this, that hand like that, that hand like that. Give it a little bend. How confident are you that you could just snap that like a twig? Uh, pretty confident. Prove it. Hey! Now, true story, true story. By the way, I could do it as well. Uh, drop that, you're fine. Actually, you know what, chuck it at Luke. He seems like a responsible person to clean that up. Just chuck it at him. Oh gosh. Oh Lord, okay. This is, do you attest that this is just three of the same exact ones? The exact same ones, right? There's just three of them. And I put a rubber band right here. I had interns help me out with that today. Now, I want you to put your hands where the rubber bands are. Same thing, you can't break it over your knee, same form, because I don't want you to, all right? And I want you to give it as much as you can, just out like that, try to break it, see what happens. Is it, do you attest that's the same exact little dowel rod? Wow, did you see that? But now there's three of them. Go, come on, give it all you got. Keep it up, keep it up top. All you got, ain't gonna happen, ain't gonna happen. Listen, go ahead, come on, give it up for Lil Dre, everybody. Appreciate it, Andre, go ahead, get out of here. That's just the power of three. Come on, how many know that you've got more than three people in your small group? How many know that you look around and you've got 300 teenagers in Southeast Texas who show up to youth group every single Wednesday night? Come on, we are stronger together than we are by ourselves and that is the only message that I have for you tonight. Jesus prayed it for you that we would be unified, we would come together because guess what? Christianity isn't a solo sport. You cannot be successful in Christianity by yourself. God has gifted us with a church family. God has gifted you with a small group. God has gifted you with family members to set you up for success. We are stronger together than we are alone, but here's the problem, together isn't easy. Together isn't easy. Here's what I mean by that. For some reason, we ended up with this idea in America that when you go to church, you're supposed to act like you have it all together. Right? Someone put Stager in the group chat. I love Stager. He's one of our newest junior high leaders. Come on, I love this guy. Think about it. 
We have this unconscious or this expectation that we've got to be perfect. We've got to be representative. That the only way for me to build a friend is for me to be so cool and so like, hey, who, here's who I am. Let me perform. Let me act like I'm so good. Let me kind of get into this performance state so that I can earn my friends when the exact opposite is true. It's when you walk in vulnerability and when you start learning to love and serve each other rather than try to prove yourself to someone else that you build true, deep, meaningful friendships. And for some reason, we got this idea in church that we should act like we have it all together instead of trying to live together. Come on, you're not the only one struggling to read you version every day. You're not the only one struggling to be like, how do you even talk to God? You're not the only one going through this stuff, but the enemy is lying to you saying, hey, you've got to figure it out by yourself so that you can prove it to the people around you so that then you can help someone else rather than saying, hey, I can't do this on my own, but I know that I am stronger together and I'm gonna be willing to be vulnerable and talk to somebody about it. I need help because I can't do this alone. Because that, that same scripture a minute ago says, in isolation, the enemy is gonna wipe the floor with you. In isolation, you can be knocked out. But when you're together, you're stronger. When you're together, you're stronger. Check this stuff out. Like, let's talk about church, right? Why do we gather? Why do we do this? Why do we come together like this? Romans 12, 4 and 5. What's the point of coming together as the church? Well, because you are the, like, one body. But you have many members. And members do not all have the same function. So we, though many are one body in Christ. Because of Jesus, we are family. We are many members, we are one body in Christ and individually we are members of one another. I can't sing. Grace and Chris and Aaron and, and, and Addison, happy birthday, and so many other people, they can sing. I can't do stuff with my hands like Chris Moore, right? I, I, can't, I, I can't design things like Casey Tate, I, I, can't, I can't organize a thousand cookies for your Christmas party, right? like Hannah, right? I, I, can't, I can't connect with people the way that Trevani does. Like, and I could go on and on with all of our leaders, but we're stronger together, right? I can't lead the greeting team, the, I can't lead the cafe team, I can't lead the, the, the merch team, I can't lead the worship team, I can't, I can't do it by myself because I am limited by who I am, but together we are stronger. Together I can't reach Southeast Texas for Jesus, but you better believe by the power of the Holy Spirit we can because we are better together. We are, our potential is limitless, but we have got to understand you gotta stop acting like you have it all together. You gotta stop that. That's not who we are at Praise You. We are real, honest, and vulnerable about who we are. And we gotta start living together. Stop acting like you got it all together and start living together. And be honest when someone hurts you. Be honest when, when you are struggling. Be like Jesus is all I'm trying to say. Paul, one of the first pastors, he met Jesus one day, changed his life forever. Because again, the man who died came back to life and he wrote it this way in Philippians chapter two. He said it this way. He said, if there's any encouragement in Christ Jesus, any comfort from love, any participation in the spirit, any affection, any sympathy, he says, complete my joy by being together by being of the same mind, by having the same love, being in full accord and of one mind. Well, how do you do this, Paul? How do you, because together isn't easy. Together is hard because sin separates. He says, okay, do nothing out of selfish ambition or conceit, but in humility, count others as more significant than yourself. Let each of you look not only to your own interests, but start looking into the interest of others. Have this mind among yourselves, which is yours in Christ Jesus, who, though he was in the form of God, did not count equality with God a thing to be grasped, a thing to be used to his advantage, but he emptied himself. He took the form of a servant. He was born in the likeness of a human. And being found in human form, he humbled himself by, being a, by becoming obedient to the point of death, even death on the cross. Your sins separated you from God and God was not okay with not being together so we died on a cross so that we could be together with him. That's how much God believes that we are stronger together. 
He believed that so much that your sin separated you from God. And he went the whole way. He humbled himself so much, looked to our needs, and he went to a cross and he died. He paid the penalty. He never sinned, so he was able to be a sacrifice for you so that you could have an opportunity to be saved. Not by saying, hey, let me prove it, acting like you have it all together, but by saying, God, I just need to live life together with you. If you ever come to God being like, God, look how good I am, save me. That's not how it works. You gotta go to God being like, God, I just need to live with you because Jesus didn't stay dead. He came back to life. He came back to life and he's still alive to this day. And his promise to us is I will be with you always. I'm sending you in the third person of my trinity of who I am in the power of the Holy Spirit to be together with you. So when it comes to your relationship with God, we can't act like we have it all together. We've got to request that we do life together because I can't do it alone, God. That's the essence of salvation is to be honest and vulnerable and humble yourself. Be like, I'm not God. And when it comes to doing life with each other, we've got to look at each other and say, I can't act like I have it all together. I've got to look at my small group. I've got to look at the people God has placed in my life and say, hey, I need to do life together. And so tonight, that's the message, that's the heart of this. And so if, if you guys would stand as I wrap up, I really just want you to, see the difference together makes. It may not be flashy. It may not be like, whoa, that, it almost is like, how could he break one, but he couldn't break three? And you may sit there and be like, no, 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 I can do this myself. I don't know, it's too hard to be vulnerable with God or vulnerable with my small group or vulnerable with the people God's placed in my life. How about being vulnerable with your parents? You've already done the first step. They know that you're at Praise Youth right now. When's the last time you invited them into your spiritual journey? And I don't know where your parents are at. I, I don't know if they lead a Bible study every single night. I don't know if they pray over you or jiggle your belly. I don't know what they do. Or maybe you might be saying, well, I'm being raised by my grandparents or my parents are split up or I, whatever excuse you wanna, not excuse, or whatever reality that you're living in, I promise you, look at me, I promise you, if you invite your parents into the spiritual journey, it'll make all the world a difference in your life because you aren't meant to do it alone, you're meant to do it together. And maybe, just maybe, some of you will ignite a passion in your parents' lives to follow Jesus. And so when I give you a a random announcement that you're like, oh, what are we doing that for? I want you to know it's in the heart of together. That next week we're doing what's called a parent night to where I'm inviting your parents to come to praise you, to invite them into the process of your spiritual growth. Together isn't easy. I know the concept of your parent coming to praise you is kind of foreign and weird, but I promise you, we are stronger together. So next week is parent week. You may be like, what's the application to the sermon, Jimmy? I'm ready. Bow my head, close my eyes, raise my hand, change my life, God. The application to this sermon is that if you really want to live life together, whoever's raising you, invite them to praise youth next week. Let God know that you're serious, that you can't do this alone. And then as a practice step, before you go to your parents, you're about to go to a small group. Right, so tonight you're gonna to go to your parents, but maybe before that you're gonna to go to your small group. Why don't you invite them and say, hey, I need to do this together. And even before we go to our small group, you're about to go to the living God right now through song. And we're gonna sing a few songs. And maybe you in that moment, you need to say, God, I'm tired of living life isolated from you. Let's do life together. So through song in this next moment, go to God. God, I wanna live life together. I wanna to be with you in your small group, and then with your parents. Those are your three applications. Let me, let me ask you this though, bow your heads and close your eyes for this. If there's somebody here tonight who's never given their life to Jesus, you've never surrendered yourself 
you've been acting like your own God. And you'd like to surrender yourself here today and say, you are God and I'm not. I got a death problem. You conquered death and I'll follow you. I just wanna be with you. I know that I'm a sinner and I need help. That's the essence of salvation. And I believe you're the answer, Jesus. If that's you and you've never done that before, but tonight you know tonight's your night and you wanna give your life to Jesus, would you raise your hand? And as your pastor, I wanna give you your next step of what that looks like. Anybody here tonight wanna give their life to Jesus? Raise your hand right now. You know who you are. God's speaking to your heart. Yeah, amen, I hope you mean it, man. I hope you mean it. Appreciate it. That's great. If you raised your hand, we're gonna give you a Bible because we love the fact that you are starting a relationship with Jesus. Anybody else love the fact that we have one person here tonight who's willing to step in a relationship with Jesus? Come on, you're not cheering loud enough. Come on, eternity is being changed, lives are being changed. Proud of you. So your next step is during this next song, go to God and say, God, I just wanna live life together. And then when you go to small group, tell your small group, Let's live life together. Then go home. Tell your parent, come to parent night. Let's live life together. Amen? I love you. Praise you. Let's worship.